So, when I first started making music, I never thought I'd be, I, I'd complicate my life this much. That's for sure. I was doing just doing songs, just uh, recording songs in my bedroom uh, on on a beautiful on the microphone on the beautiful microphone of my uh, my headphones, and the quality was. <laughs> Uh, but then I, I just figured I wanted to do something um, unique, cohesive, one, one thing. And that's when I started thinking about uh, making my first solo album, which is uh, Child of Dream from 2016. I actually started doing it uh, and recording some stuff in, in the early 2016. Since the beginning, I wanted to do something uh, that was that followed the concept of of my childhood, growing up, um, very sad stuff, very very sad stuff, and yeah, I just uh, started recording in in around January or it was it was February, I think I'm not sure. Uh, and I was all alone in my in my house in the in the Alps, and just me, no sound engineer, no nothing. I just had my computer, some some instruments, but that was it. And it was very lonely, and I couldn't sing. But yeah, all the while there was just this idea of um, telling a story, and I needed the songs to tell the story. But. On, at the same time, I wanted to, to tell something else with the cover and with the vinyl edition and then adding some stuff. And f since, since the beginning, I, I, I could say that I, I'd always uh, wanted the listener to uh, dig deeper in the songs. Alcune mie canzoni le stavo tenendo da parte, mi sono sempre detto queste le tengo perché voglio fare qualcosa di intimo e credo che sia arrivato il momento di farlo. Quindi voglio fare questo disco con te. Ho bisogno del tuo aiuto per, per raccogliere i fondi perché fare un disco costa davvero tanto. E per questo sono qui a raccontarti proprio su Music Razer, sul sito. Qui so yeah, it started as a, a campaign on, on Music Razer and it was a successful campaign of too few money it wasn't it wasn't enough i had to put a lot after that i thought yeah 2000 2000 euros is gonna be all right but it wasn't it really wasn't i had to put a lot in it but from there i i knew i want uh, i wanted to do something for the people that believed in me and and for myself as well because it was very a very intimate and personal album and from there, I never thought I could have turned it all around and mm, turned the whole album into a, a rock opera mm -hmm. as it happened. Because I thought to myself, I was something like this just happens at the end of your career and you're like, 30 years ahead of 30 years of uh, musical career and you're going back to your hometown and you're like, yeah, can I do a rock opera or like a musical based on my music and that, like, you know, and working with those great, great artists. It was amazing. Like it was a com com perfect combination of working with friends on, uh, on one side on, on the stage we were all friends 
people I'd known for a long time, but on on like you know behind the curtains creating the whole thing. They were amazing, and I still don't understand how they managed to make it so good with my songs. <laughs> okay guys let's just let's put this on on paper you know just let's take a picture of whatever we've been doing and freeze it in time because I work like this I don't I don't want to I don't want to dig dig up the past not that much not as much as I did for the first one and so we wanted to I wanted to re-record uh, the the whole show in there without the theatrical parts just the the live let's say the live renditions of the songs and yeah they said yeah we can do it and then <laughs> they said no we can't <laughs> like a week before the the day we had in the studio and so i just said to myself well you know I, i'll go there and i'll record some songs i i didn't i just didn't want to to cancel everything. I had written three songs which were Skeleton Dance, Beetle and Forgotten Media. And so I just went there with my guitar and my pedal board and my two pals and we started recording. And I only had like eight hours in the studio and I managed to play everything. Diciamo che la particolarità di quella giornata è che Federico doveva suonare tutti gli strumenti per ogni traccia, quindi si era improvvisato batterista che era la prima volta in studio diciamo, doveva registrare la batteria, cioè era una cosa, la, la, la cosa particolare era che sì, era la prima volta anche per lui in studio di, di suonare uno strumento che non aveva mai registrato e oltre a quello fare le parti di basso, la voce, la chitarra, quindi comunque avevamo una giornata molto piena e l'obiettivo era di poter ottenere il più possibile dato che comunque avevamo una giornata ad ore e come, penso, cioè, come, come di solito funziona gli studi si pagano ad ore siamo riusciti ad ottenere in una giornata tantissimi suoni che poi dopo in fase di post produzione abbiamo potuto scegliere e inserire per poi ottenere il risultato finale che è stato interessante soprattutto aveva un capo una coda ogni traccia era a sé stante ma aveva un filo logico con l'altra it was interesting but after that day in the show I had to stop the production and get writing the other songs and in, it was there that I realized that I wanted to make to limit myself and I wanted to put some boundaries and I wanted to create something unique in shape so I couldn't express myself as much as I did in the first uh, in the first album with the songs and with the lyrics and I wanted to still tell a story and keep that concept thing rolling. And that's what I did. So I just thought to myself, after a, sh a show this big, something should happen, but it didn't happen. And it, you know what? There's a lot of torment in, inside of myself. But in the end, I don't need fame. I don't want fame. I'm just happy recording songs and just happy that some people sometimes listen to it. So that's the whole idea, spiritual idea behind the title and the album itself. But the true thing that added to it is that I, I limited myself to, I was limited to eight minutes per side of the vinyl. Because being a, a seven, a double seven inch with uh, that was cut at 33 RPM, I just had that much time, you know, maximum of eight minutes per side. So 
I had to write songs and limit them in time while still ex expressing the, the concept and the ideas behind the songs. Something I, I, I had to add, and I, I chose to add in Jack Batz is not famous, is that I couldn't tell that much and I couldn't paint such pictures in the songs anymore. I had time limits. This kind of limitation was great, but for a listener, uh, maybe you need to give a little bit more. So I chose to do some videos and that was that added to the aesthetic part and to the idea that I don't need uh, a label or you know somebody to to e evaluate my my creations I just need myself and if I wanted something I it's always been like that I'd go and get it the way I can you know so I just called my friends and my video maker friends my they studied, they studied cinematography. Is that cinematography? So unnatural, blue but warm and made by... So the idea of Haiku 5 originated as, let's say, a protest but it wasn't really a protest. The first time Jack told me he wanted to record an album made of 30 seconds tracks, I thought it was an impossible mission and I told him, I told him that in my opinion, it was a really bad idea. And yeah, I think they used uh, the word bullshit. I, I came across Wolfpack and what they did with Sleepify and it all got together and I, and I chose to make a concept album and to limit myself, limit myself even more. Writing songs with haiku poems for lyrics and only 30, 35, let's say 35 seconds average uh, duration. I don't know, like I, I, at that time I didn't know if anyone had done something like that. And then I understood that it was actually, in a way, unique. And to my surprise, to my greatest surprise, my hardest work to understand yet, was beloved by so many people. <laughs> Which brings me joy, because it was the first time I, I really pushed the boundaries of, of the lost in translation, of the of the boundary of the language and trying to understand and pushing the listener to understand the true meaning of the songs. I mean, the titles are in Japanese and the lyrics are hermetic. Is that how, how you say it? Like extremely condensed. So you, you really have to put an effort to understand what's the concept behind it. A king of turtles next year! A six tonight. So I've always been a fan of the limitation concept, but not in the in the sound. I mean, I'm, when I'm recording, I what I really need is to have the freedom to express the songs and the sound in as many ways as possible. Thousands of combinations and possibilities to to dig from, you know, to, to draw from. And that's something we've taken to extremes with Haiku Fight, which was the first time we recorded uh, the music as a single stream of consciousness and it originated as a single guitar track and then we cut it into pieces, into those tiny bits. So it's all in the same, in the same uh, key and relative minor at, at, at some times and same reference BPM let's say so it sounds like an, a single song but it's actually 30 tracks and that's the sp special part and when we were recording it we couldn't I wouldn't I wanted to use all the effects 
but I had for guitar and for vocals and for bass and for keyboards. And the only way to do it for the stringed instruments was to record the dry track and then reamp it and you know, reamplify it. And so that's what we did. And that definitely gave me the chance to express the sound as best as we could while still being retained into the limits of the 30 seconds. So it was the biggest challenge of, of my life to date because uh, now it's going to be even harder. But um, we, we made it. Yeah, we, we did it and we finished it in one month. So it was really challenging for everyone. But yeah, we we are very happy with the result and we've got lots of streams so we're quite happy because we will gain some money maybe it, it all originated as a concept album and the story was built upon the idea of the concept album and was created by the fact that it was all it was all just a huge not that huge because it's just 19 minutes but a very broad big picture that kept on gaining meaning as time went by i mean we tried so many so many weird and wonderful techniques in writing but also but definitely in in, in the recording process i was screaming sometimes i was Sometimes I was whispering, we've been using ribbons, we've been using dynamic micro microphones, but also any kind of setting on, on the effects. And that's something I love, and I'm probably gonna do it for the rest of my career. I love to tweak. I know it's just a matter of time, I'll just end up being one of those white haired and bearded guys with a huge, modular a wall of modular synthesizer just tweaking and putting all the all of those cables around just to gain the perfect sound it's just a matter of time